Hey everybody, I'm in a hurry because I just had a couple of friends call me and tell me there was a mountain lion that's visible. Uh, pretty close, reasonably close to the road, which is pretty rare for a mountain lion. So I had all my gear, all my camera gear and clothes and everything is all in the house uh, getting packed up for my Yellowstone workshop. Um, so I just grabbed, I've just grabbed and ran. I just grabbed it right over here. That's what I grabbed. I grabbed the 600 F4 with a Nikon D850 and a 100 to 400 on another Nikon D850. And in hindsight, I probably should have brought my Z7, oops, to shoot uh, a little better quality video, but we'll see. I don't know anything about what's going on up there. But when I get a call like that, it's like drop everything and go for a mountain lion. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, hopefully I can uh, make some images and some video of a wild mountain lion because that does not happen very often. So now that I've merged into traffic, I'll let you know what happens when I get there. Fun stuff.
Oh, I'm cold. Uh, that was awesome. I will um, tell you more about it later when I get back home, either today or tomorrow. I'll do shoot a little video telling you about what just happened out there, but I was not dressed appropriately for standing out there for whatever it was, three or four hours, I guess, but awesome. Anytime you get to photograph a wild mountain lion is a freaking gift, and that was awesome. Made some nice images, had a blast, uh, just a magnificent animal. Gorgeous, gorgeous animal. So, uh, anyway, that was a rare event, and it was awesome. Ah, so great. But I'll tell you more about it later and show you a few uh, frames of video and a few frames of photos. See ya. Hello again, friends. Time to talk about this mountain lion situation. So I didn't vlog it out there. I have vlogger fright and there were a ton of people around, so I didn't vlog it. Uh, but I just wanted to mention a few things here. You, you've seen like all of the photos that I took really. Um, I just, you know, sequenced them all together there. It was super fun. Um, but so that day started, uh, I got that phone call and text from a couple of friends. Thank you to those, the two of you who messaged me there. Much appreciated. Um, at a, just uh, like 1.15 p.m., and this was back on January 8th. Uh, and by 1.30, I was there and set up and started shooting and um, made those two sequences. So what was happening there is this mountain lion had made a kill, and uh, some birds were on the kill. So it had retreated up to that tree that you saw up there. And the birds were on the carcass. It, I guess it didn't have time to bury it before daylight or whatever. And the cougar was pissed. So it, I saw it run down to the carcass three times between 1.30 p.m. and 4 p.m. And those were the sequences that you saw there. And it was epic. That was like, you know, epic is overused term, but with a wild mountain lion chasing, running down the hillside like that with the snow flying and the rocks flying and coming straight into the lens, I think that qualifies as epic. So um, I don't use that term lightly, and it was fantastic. But that was it from 1.30 to 4. So there was two and a half hours of fantastic shooting. And then, boom, it was over. Uh, the mountain lion for the next four days, uh, me and a hundred other photographers <laughs> were all out there um, hoping for a repeat of that. And it didn't happen. Uh, unfortunately, the, the mountain lion was much more diligent about burying its kill. And so it just stayed up in the trees basically for the next four days. And then at nighttime, it would come down and feed on the kill. So uh, I think what you'll see there is uh, at the end, you saw some kind of grainy footage of the mountain lion. That was when it came down at night. Now, that footage was shot at 25,000 ISO. So it was pretty dark, but there was also enough ambient light getting kicked up there by uh, the gas station that's nearby and the movie um, billboard was kicking up a bunch of light and the traffic lights. So there's these weird color casts going on with all that artificial light, but it was given just enough light there that I could actually shoot at 25,000 ISO. So that was kind of lucky there. But that was it. There was two and a half hours of action, and then it was standing around in the cold, hoping that something would happen again. And unfortunately, it didn't really happen that way. But uh, I'll just give you a couple of quick mention my settings. So when that cougar was bounding down the hill to chase the birds off of the carcass, that was that was it. That was the magic. And uh, my settings for all of those photos was locked in on manual there because the background was changing with the dark tree and the bright white snow and then some neutral colored rocks. I just locked in the exposure there to keep the snow bright white. And uh, the settings I was using there was one two thousandth of a second F4 uh, ISO 800. So that gave me plenty of shutter speed to freeze any action of that thing cruising down the hill. 
And uh, luckily we had some nice bright overcast light. It was just gorgeous light for that animal. So then you'll see another picture here. Hi, Ruby. Yep, I see you there. I got Lula back here. She's taking a nap. Hi, Lou. Yep, this is Lula. She's a sweet little beagle. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, I'll show you a photo I took at night there. I was playing with, you know, I was shooting some video at ISO 25,000, and then I was also playing with shooting some stills. So whenever the cougar would kind of lift its head and pause for a moment, I was trying to do um, some exposures there. And uh, I actually was kind of successful. You know, a bunch of them were had motion blur in it as she moved around. But I was setting my um, my exposure there for a half a second f4 and iso 6400 so at iso 6400 it's a little bit uh you know there's some noise in there and then i have to crop in on it quite a bit uh which kind of makes that noise more noticeable but here i'll show you the one of the resulting photos of that so you can see that lion stood reasonably still for a half a second there and so it's just a matter of timing those and hoping you get one that's sharp before it moves a little bit um, and you know that didn't turn out great but there's no other way to shoot that, uh, so it's better to try <laughs> and uh, get some blurry images than to not try at all. So uh, anyway, I got a couple of pictures there in the nighttime uh, with uh, the mountain lion on the carcass, but the rest of all that action over four days was all in the first two and a half hours. So uh, just a magical situation, and I'm just, uh, I feel super lucky to uh, have been able to be a part of that and um, to share that with so many other photographers. I'm not sure how many made it there for that first two and a half hours, but uh, certainly a dozen or more. But then after that, the crowd showed up and it was mostly standing around waiting and hoping, unfortunately. So anyway, there's, there it is. This will wrap up my video for the wild mountain lion that happened to make a kill, uh, looked like a mule deer, right there next to the Maverick gas station here in Jackson. So a very rare opportunity to photograph a wild mountain lion and uh, just super grateful that I was able to be there. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope someday you get to photograph a wild mountain lion too because they're awesome, just amazing creatures to watch. So take care. See you on the next video.